and Maria's on the line now. Good morning to you, Maria. Uh, hello. Hi. So you, your mother um, was drinking. Um, my mother has been drinking since I was young. So your your mother was an alcoholic, was she? Yes. And you've got Most a fear that. She... <laughs> Sorry. Most definitely. Okay, and you've got a fear now that as your life is moving on, that you're becoming your mother, you're turning into your mother. Yeah, um, she drinks up to three to four bottles of red wine a night, um, every single night. And I feel whenever I'm stressed or upset that I drink also, okay. and I don't want that to be... The same for me that is what it's been for her. Yeah. How much are you drinking? What are you drinking? Um, I drink up to 12 cans of drunk cider a night. Okay. OK. OK, so, um, Maria, you are what we would refer to as the adult child of an alcoholic. Most likely, all through your childhood, you would have had to caretake your mother because she was unable to look after herself, which meant that you had no model of a mother to follow. So you see her dealing with her stress by drinking. You're learning that as you go along. So, of course, you've learned that that's what you do when you experience stress and you're just following in those patterns. So not only have you been a mother to your mother through childhood, but now, as you become an adult, you don't know how to parent yourself. So I would say that the drinking is absolutely something something that needs to stop but underneath all of that there will be material relating to your own identity which has been formed by watching your mum and you will need to work on that without a doubt you need to work on how to take care of yourself how to handle stress as an emotion as a normal human emotion and not something that you have to hurt yourself as a result of feeling. So Our lady this morning who came in and she turned it around, she started, the first thing to do was starting going out and yeah. physically going out walking, then it built up jogging, then it built up running, and that was her thing. The moment she felt like she was going to turn to the bottle or have a drink, she was like, right, train is on, get out of the house, distraction. I get that. I think distraction is proven. There's lots of research about distraction having uh, an important place. But if you talk about running, I immediately think somebody's on the run from their feelings. Yeah. First they're on the run from it by going into a bottle, then you get it. your training shoes on and you're on the run again. But at least at some point, it is, unless one day you hurt your ankle, you can't run anymore, so you haven't developed the coping mechanism, so you relapse back into the alcohol. Yeah, yeah. So what you want to do is, if you use those distraction techniques, you want to do therapy of some kind alongside so that you're beginning to develop emotional resilience, mm. so that you're developing curiosity in yourself where previously there was shame and resentment. We need to convert the kind of, I'm not good enough, I hate this, I hate myself, this is off, all those things into, wow, look at what I was made from, what my experiences were, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. And to learn to be kind to yourself. Thank you, Maria. So Thank you for yeah, calling. Maria, lots of